Hello, this is Robert Hooks, and welcome to the Urban Roundtable. Our guest is a political giant who has made history throughout his four decades in public service. He was California's first African-American lieutenant governor, and we're pleased to welcome Assemblyman Mervyn Dimely to our show. Assemblyman, welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, indeed. Indeed. Uh, let's talk Sacramento. Let's talk about what's happening. Is, is that in California? <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing with the governor and the lottery? Talk about that. It has to be the most outrageous, most ridiculous proposal ever presented to the legislature. But, viewers, what the governor is saying to you, I want you to go gamble some more so that you could pay my debt. I'm going to modernize the lottery. I'm going to make it more attractive to you so that poor people who uh, want an escape by using the lottery can gamble more to pay the debt. It is such a gamble that even the legislative analyst said, this is no way to go. Really? Now tell me something. Now you know people are playing the lottery. Is this, uh, this is not a good thing. Well, playing the lottery to pay my debt. That's the point. Pay the governor's debt. De right. The governor, look, let, let me go back to history for a moment. Sure. When Governor Reagan took office in 67, he had a similar crisis. He had the courage, he had the vision to go to his members in the Republican caucus and Democratic caucus. Mm -hmm. I can remember so clearly when Assemblyman Bill Bagley mm -hmm. came to me and said, the governor would like to see you. Me? Yes, he'd like to see you. And had me downstairs and said, I need your vote on this tax measure. So he implemented the largest tax increase in California history. And guess what? Mm. He got reelected and ended up as president of the United States. Mm. The author of the bill, Senator Duke Majin, ended up as governor. So this notion that people are going to vote against you if you vote for taxes, if they know what you're going to do with the taxes, right. are you going to do uh, education, are you going to do health care, are you going to do crime prevention, of course they will support you. This governor does not have any support in his own caucus. Mm. And while he is going around the state talking about political reform, Rome is burning. Healthcare. Let's talk about healthcare. Well, there were two conflicting proposals before the legislature. Both had merits. One was SB 840 by Senator Sheila Q in the Senate. Mm. The other one was AB 8 by then Speaker Fabian Nunes in the assembly. It passed the assembly with all Repu the, the Democrat votes. Mm -hmm. It got to the Senate and the Senate Health Committee voted it down. So the only measure we have before us now, which is in the Senate, is Sheila Kuehl's bill. Now what is, the, why not that bill? A very good bill. Why not that bill? Well the bill calls for 54 votes. Mm -hmm. California viewers is only one of three states in the union that calls for two-thirds vote for any measure dealing with fiscal integrity. Mm -hmm. And so she does not have the six votes. We only have 48 votes in a Democratic caucus. Mm -hmm. You need six votes, 54 votes, to pass the budget or to increase revenue. And she doesn't have it. Okay. No, we don't have it. Right, right. We don't have it. The governor doesn't have it. Mm. Republicans have signed a pledge of no tax increase. They don't even want to close loopholes. We had a measure to close the loopholes for oil drilling. California is the only one of 21 oil producing states that doesn't have an oil severance tax. Mm. And when that measure came up on the floor, the Republicans voted against it. It would have brought in about three or four billion dollars for education. Where do we stand on the budget? I wish we were standing. We're not even sitting. We're not, we are floating. Uh, what we are faced with is some drastic cuts. Where do you cut in the California budget? You can't cut education because constitutionally they have something called Proposition 98 to protect them. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cut the prison system. All heck will break right. loose in California. So where do you cut? You cut health. You cut human services. You cut cost of living. You cut senior citizens. You cut the poorest of the poor because that's the only flexibility you have. Mm -hmm. And so what is needed, we need some revenue. We need to tax the upper income bracket. 
we need to close loopholes. Mm -hmm. If you have a yacht, and I know you have a yacht, <laughs> <laughs> you can go down to Ensenada and spend 90 days, and you have you pay no taxes. What? If you have a Air airplane, you could do the same and go to Tijuana, spend 90 days, and you pay no taxes. Did and we try to close that loophole, not a single Republican vote. That's, that's, that's unheard of. That's, that's the problem we face. Mm. This new speaker, Ms. Karen Bass, is right, putting to together a tax reform commission mm -hmm. to look at these disadvantages for the poor in the tax code and all of the advantages for the rich in the tax code. Just how to have a level playing field. And she should make an announcement uh, in the next week or so. Will she be a good speaker? Yes, yes. The problem with the speaker, my friend, is that you don't stay long enough mm. because of term limits. You don't stay long enough to be a great speaker like Jess Unruh or Willie Brown. You stay long enough to be a good speaker. Mm. Time is not on your side. She is good for two years. That's it? Yes. And she's turned out. Wow. Yeah, so term limits has have to be amended. Yeah. yeah. What about redistricting? Well, your assemblyman here, Colin Price, mm -hmm. is the big gun on redistricting. He chairs the assembly elections and redistricting committee. Now, there is a measure on the ballot in November that does us a lot of harm as minorities and in particular African Americans because Common Cause has set up a commission by way of the initiative that sets up a commission with no guarantees of minority representation. Mm -hmm. And so we do not know what will happen. The chances are it takes a lot of creative redistricting to maintain the district that we have in the African American community. Mm -hmm. And it is my hope that this measure would be handled by the assembly and with the able leadership of uh, Corin Price, we would get a fair re redistricting that would maintain the level of support we have now. But there's another issue involved here in California. Mm -hmm. We have to begin to look beyond black districts. We have to look at coalition districts now. Mm -hmm. Because of the demographic change which has taken place, or which has taken place in California, uh, African Americans moved into the Inland Empire, mm -hmm. they moved to San Fernando Valley, and so the central core of uh, what we knew as South Los Angeles is no longer black. Yeah. yeah. So your your uh, your concern is mainly that well, let's talk because I thought that the, the governor Schwarzenegger uh, was going to, um, despite the fact that he is of that other party, uh, was going to was going to um, be unlike the other uh, Republican governor. <laughs> Look, do you think that Bloomberg of New York? has the interests of Democrats in California. He has put in a quarter of a million dollars in this. The governor has put in half a million dollars in this project. Do you think that that is to preserve Democratic representation or that is to preserve minority representation? No way. What the governor wants to do is have um, a so-called level and feel that Democrats and Republicans are alike numerically, and that's not the case in the voter registration list. Right. So it is that we are at a great disadvantage, and I am hopeful that the voters in California would vote that measure down. Mm -hmm. Which, what's the number on that? Uh, they, uh, I, I don't think they have a number. Oh. They just uh, just completed uh, gathering the signatures. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Are there any other initiatives that uh, that you want to discuss, or any other Sacramento subjects you want to deal with here? Well, here? the big problem we face right now in California, in my judgment, is education reform. Let mm -hmm. me give you an example of how ridiculous this is. If you're an employer, Boeing, Lockheed, etc., and there is an absenteeism on the assembly line, the company does not get punished by the federal government or the IRS. But if you run a school district and some student is absent, you get punished. Mm. So you get punished for absenteeism. You don't get paid, you don't get what they call ADA, average daily attendance. I have legislation that would do away with that system and would say, uh, once a child enrolls for the spring semester in February, the district is paid for the entire semester. And that absenteeism ought to be handled by different department, looking at counseling, helping parents understand the necessity for 
for uh, for enrollment in the classes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so this has to change because districts now every time Englewood District or LA Unified has absence, absenteeism, they get punished. It's an old archaic system that needs to be changed. Now this legislation, uh, is it, has it been introduced? Have you introduced yeah, it? Yeah, I've introduced it and um, they're trying to put a package together to reform education. Because of the fiscal crisis, it may not happen this year. Mm. Wow. So things are <laughs> not going too smooth. Not going too well in terms of the budget. That's what I mean. Unless we have some new sources of revenue. Mm. If you don't, you have to cut the poorest of the poor, the most helpless people. You'll have to cut back Medicare. You'll have to cut, cut back children's health care. You'll have to cut back social services, cost of living increase. And, and what is very, very tragic in my judgment, the governor is really not taking this message to the people. He's talking about political reform. But you can't have political reform unless you can balance the budget. And that, to me, is the dilemma we face now in California. So the budget's uh, the key thing. But budget is key. Mm -hmm. Budget is key. And the other one, of course, is uh, six million Californians are without health insurance. And, and a similar number have minimum insurance. And so we need to reform the system. We need to have a comprehensive health care system mm -hmm. in California. You see, the cure bill is a good bill, very good bill. But we can't get the two-thirds vote. I was going to say it can't pass. Can't pass. It can pass as a policy measure. But, but once you put the money in it, right. policy measure, 41 votes in the Assembly, 21 votes in the Senate. But once you put money in it, it up the ante, you have to go two thirds. Uh, yeah. It's frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, well, the other reform that we need to look at very closely, at some point, labor, teachers, <coughs> and, um, community groups, etc have to come together and reform the budget process. Mm -hmm. We are only one of three states in the union that calls for two-thirds vote. Arkansas, Rhode Island, and California. California. And that is the reason why we face this dilemma. Eventually, Californians have to face up to it. Every year, we have the same problem. Yeah. I'm sure last year you had a similar issue oh, that absolutely. you faced with. Mm -hmm. And we'll face it next year. What's going to happen? How's it changed? We'll have to have a measure, an, is, an initiative on the ballot mm -hmm. to change it to ma ma majority rule, as the other states, as the 47 other states. Now, is that possible in California? No, I, 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 I could be over-optimistic. Right. It's difficult, but I think we have to continue to remind voters why it is we have this dilemma every summer. Mm -hmm. And they have to understand that we, a change has to take place. Hmm. Let's talk uh, briefly about Drew. Ah, Drew. My favorite about. subject. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Uh, very good subject. Um, several years ago, oh, th over 30 years ago, mm -hmm. D, D. Mitchell Spellman and a young doctor by the name of Alfred Cannon came to me and said the Charles Drew postgraduate medical school was run out of money mm -hmm. and they needed some help. I went to the Legislative Council to discover that California's constitution mm -hmm. prohibits the gifts of public funds to a private school. Mm -hmm. So we had to develop something very unique, unprecedented. We did have, developed legislation that budgets funds to Drew University by way of the Board of Regents of the University of California. Mm -hmm. From the Board of Regents to UCLA and from U UCLA to Charles Drew University. 24 students are selected every year and they go to UCLA for the first two academic years. Then they come back to what was then King Drew right. for the last two clinical years. Unfortunately, King is out of the picture. So the school is moving in to some new directions. They just broke ground for a nursing school. They will break ground months ahead for a medical building and they're moving towards a four-year medical school. So Drew University. Yes. In other words, students would not have to go to UCLA's campus. They can do it all here at Drew University. Now, what, what is your involvement in, the, in, in, in health care? Um, well, I chair the Assembly Health Committee, mm -hmm. and I authored the legislation to create 
Drew University as we know it today. Right. So I'm deeply involved in the future of Charles Drew University. So this is this is a bit of good news. Well, <laughs> yes, yeah, Drew is moving in a direction that one anticipated many years ago. Mm -hmm. We have a new president, a very dynamic woman, yes. and uh, she's moving ahead Good. very well. Good. Well, uh, we, we, we'd like for you to come back to talk to uh, our audience uh, once we get past what, what, this. Let's pass the budget. <laughs> <laughs> let's pass the budget. <laughs> and I'll tell you how badly we did. <laughs> Assemblyman Mervyn Donnelly, yeah. thank you so much, Thank sir, you for coming and talking to us at the Thank table. You. Good. Thank you very much indeed.